Hello and welcome back to the Cyber People podcast. I'm Will Weatherall and today I have the pleasure of being rejoined by Jason Ford. For those of you that didn't uh, enjoy the first podcast we did with Jason, it was all about how to build a successful penetration testing practice. Yep. Nice to have you back, Jason. Thank you. Good to be back. Do you want to tell everyone who is hearing you for the first time who you are and what you do? Sure. So my name's Jason. I've uh, been in the cybersecurity industry, give or take 10, 10 plus years now. Um, and I look after, I've been known to build and run offensive security teams. So your penetration testing, vulnerability management, and red teaming. So yeah, that's, that's me. Awesome. But today we're going to take a little bit of a departure from the uh, core business that you're in. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the certificates versus uni for uh, building a cybersecurity career. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a, an interesting question. How did this concept, how did this question come to your attention? So as a hiring manager and a mentor for a lot of graduates, often get the same question come in, what certificate should I do? Uh, some people on uh, LinkedIn hit me up uh, asking what degree they should do or if they should do certi uh, certifications instead within cybersecurity. Uh, so I thought we could have a chat and just try to unpack this a bit, understand what a degree will get you, what the what the good things about doing a degree is, as well as what, um, what you can do if you chose to be a bit more adventurous and do uh, cybersecurity certifications instead, uh, as opposed to a degree. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's start with you. You're a case in points. Mm -hmm. What did you decide when you were embarking on your adult life? Yeah. So I, I did the uni path and back then cybersecurity wasn't much of a thing. It would be more so tied up with, you know, architecture. Um, so at the time I was just doing a standard, uh, a standard IT degree focusing on e-business. Um, and then as my career progressed, I moved more so into the cybersecurity space as that field sort of emerged and yeah, then moved more into offensive security and yeah, while later go out. Just out of curiosity, how did you choose your course? I would imagine there would have been various variations on the theme and various institutions. How did you choose that course at that uni? Well, for me, uh, I, I wasn't particularly too fast at the time about the uni to go to. Um, I mean, my marks out of high school were great, so I really went to the the uni the unis that would take me. Um, so that happened to be Wollongong down in down south. Uh, so commuting from Sydney every day to Wollongong was certainly fun. But um, no, it was overall I just took what seemed to be the best option available because for me it was all about the ends, not the means. Okay, yeah. And why didn't you stay in the goal? Were you saving money and living with the parents? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Very smart. Yeah. Very smart. Okay. And then since your degree, you've also added some certifications to yeah. your arsenal. Which ones yes. did you choose and why did you choose them? I've done a few. Um, so I largely focused originally on offensive security certifications because that was really what you needed to prove yourself in that space. So focusing on, focused on the uh, web, advanced web pen testing by INE and then the pen test professional by INE. Moving then to the OICP, the CRTO, uh, a couple of smaller vendor-based ones, then moving more to the blue side, threat hunting, um, threat hunting, incident response, and defense administration. So I've done a few. Wow. Um, and the, that's more to, you know, continually, to have that continuous learning as I progress through my career. I, I have seen his CV and his certifications do, do take up the the better parts of a page. Yep. Which ones have you got on the roadmap for the future? So as I'm looking to the next step in my career, I need to focus a bit more on the defensive side, as well as looking more into things like cyber threat intelligence, um, architecture, identity and access management. So I'll probably pick, pick up a few vendor-based certifications there. Um, there's a good thing about vendor, vendor certifications is generally they're free the training and the certification. 
So uh, it's a good way just to get a few, get a bit of credentials under your belt and learn some things for free. Okay. Yeah. So you mean that when you're working in an organization, the vendors that supply that organization will provide free certification to the employees? Generally free training uh, for basically anybody, uh, not necessarily uh, their customers. So, and it's, I, the way I see it is a way for them to make sales as well. So they get you used to using their product. You're going to re recommend it more um, in the places where you work. Um, but yeah, those generally they put out uh, training for free, sometimes the certification for free as well, or sometimes the certification is like 100, 200 bucks. So pretty cheap. Wow. Yeah. All things considered. That is a clever strategy on behalf of the vendors. Yeah. I never thought about it in those terms, but it makes sense. Create the users of the future. Yeah. All right. Great. So Jason has done an amazing amount of uh, research into this topic and Jason, you've prepared a very detailed table of the sort of breakdown of the typical cyber degree, <clears throat> what the topics would be in each semester in each year, and then what the equivalent certificates and projects would be alongside each. Yep. Did you want to run through that now or shall we include that in the show notes? And <clears throat> I guess we can do a bit of both. Okay. Um, so I'll give a, give a bit of an overview um, um, of what this table is that I prepared. But also, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll suggest the listeners go through it in detail so they can um, map it out to more or less correspond with what they want to do as well. Um, so one thing that I've noticed that universities are typically doing now is they, in the IT and cybersecurity degrees, they are providing graduates with, say, their CCNA, uh, which is a Cisco uh, networking um, certification. <coughs> Um, and generally, through those subjects, the lecturer will have their lectures as they normally do, but the lads will largely be focused on doing the CCNA as well as having to take the CC CCNA exam. So on top of that, they are having to pay for that certification while they're at uni at the same time. Alternatively, I have seen um, some maybe a bit more lazy lecturers just park their students in front of uh, free or freemium training platforms like TriHack Me or Hack the Box. So a lot of the time students are using these services anyway. Um, so why not cut out the university and just teach yourself? Um, we'll go into a lot more of the, the, those details later, but as to the table itself, basically the way that I'd broke it down is most students who are doing a degree in cybersecurity, they will be doing a three-year degree, generally two semesters per year and four subjects per semester. So what's that? Eight, 16, 24 subjects. Um, now, they'll always be juggling leads. They'll be learning things, multiple things at a time. So generally in the degree, a student will do things like introduction to programming, um, information system architecture, some mathematics for IT, a uh, bit of data, networking, in introduction to cybersecurity, uh, foundations, introduction to web development, bit of forensics, bit of ethical hacking, bit of network security, administration, um, maybe some law, and then also a lot of fluff subjects. So generally the students will be made to do a marketing component or ethics or uh, management or even just two subjects outside of uh, their school <coughs> of informatics or wherever their um, computer science or IT degrees kind of sit. Um, so they'll have to go off and do subjects in other schools. Um, so that adds a lot of fluff to a degree. So in my, in, the, in my little table, now this is very rough and anybody can basically massage this into whatever way that would be fit for them. But in, in this table, I basically gave the hypothetical of, okay, if you are going to do a, if you're going to do certificates and not go to uni, how can you make the most of that same amount of time that you would be spending at uni? So the, <clears throat> the benefit here is students can go a lot more in depth rather than just a two hour lecture and two hour um, tutorial they get per week per subject. So students can do things like their CCNA, uh, they can do their CompTIA IT fundamentals, they can do some uh, freemium training platforms like Try Hack Me and do something like the pre-security subject. Um, they can take on the sec class by CompTIA. They can do start working towards building a project 
one of the best ways I feel is most effective in learning is actually having a project that you're trying to build, right? Rather than just doing exercises for the sake of exercise. One, just on that front, yeah. Jason, sorry to interject. Yeah. Uh, one thing I've noticed with client interviews mm. is almost all my clients will, during an interview, ask the candidate what they're doing in their spare time. Mm. What are you building at home? Exactly. Mm. And it's, a lot of them will tell me, I put so much weight on that question because it'll demonstrate to me that this person mm. loves what they do mm -hmm. because they're investing their valuable time mm -hmm. that they could be spending doing other things in honing their craft and continuously improving. And it speaks yeah. volumes to the, to the attitude and the commitment that the person has to continuous learning. Whereas some some, sometimes I find that with degrees, people feel they've done their degree, that's it, I'm mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. by the time you finish your degree, especially in cyber that evolves so quickly, mm. by the time you finished, how long will that degree be relevant before yeah. Yeah. what you've studied is obsolete? Yeah. And on that topic as, as well, I feel like a lot of the time, the uni universities make it out that students will be job ready from day one uh, by the time they finish a degree. The reality is they need a lot of mentorship, a lot of guidance, a lot of work to actually um, bring up to speed. Um, so yeah, I think having, having that hands-on experience by doing your own personal project really just demonstrates that, hey, I can actually walk on my own um, I, I'm more than capable of building this or implementing that or, you know, performing whatever uh, is needed of them. So it's great to, you know, sort of highlight that. Very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as for the rest of the table, it's just basically um, a bunch of cert certifications that users, uh, sorry, that students can do to really give a well-rounded IT experience first and foremost before then moving into security. So we've done things like I mentioned things like the CCNA, um, some programming projects, um, can do that AWS foundational certificate, which is free or extremely cheap. Um, courses on SAS, DAS or SCA uh, tools, which are generally free as well. Um, there's the SOC analyst for, uh, certification from Splunk, which is a hundred bucks with the training being free. Um, alternatively, there's a blue team lead training, uh, BT, blue, blue team lead, I could, the BTL, BLT training, uh, I can't remember the vendor for that one, but that's relatively <laughs> affordable and gets people ready. Of course, you've got your OSCP as well, which really shows that you're you know, capable of those high pressure situations, being able to hack a large amount of machines within you know, a very short period of time. So overall, this is really just a template for anybody to, to give a bit of perspective and, and tailor more to what they want to focus their career on. Uh, so if you want to be an ethical hacker, then, you know, go ahead, learn, learn all your computer fundamentals first, your web programming, databases, uh, infrastructure, Active Directory, et cetera, then start building on top of that. So, you know, do the OSCP, do the CRTO, do other pen test certifications. Um, and then that should make you, if your CV landed in front of me, much more attractive candidate than somebody who has just done a a uh, Bachelor of Science Security. Absolutely. And with so many certifications being so cheap, I think if I were a hiring manager and I saw someone's CV and they hadn't done them, I'd be thinking, well, hang on, you, you can't even invest a hundred bucks in, in, in yeah. your career. Like what does that say about your mindset? Yeah. I mean, not all certifications are cheap and it really comes down to knowing the lay of the land as well. So knowing that vendors are giving those really cheap certifications out if you you know, do their training. Um, but yeah, largely speaking, they're there for the taking, really. When you said freemium, I heard you say that a couple yep. of times. What is that for the uninitiated? Yeah, so freemium, generally you're seeing platforms pop up. A uh, couple off the top of my head would be like Pentester Lab, Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, and a few others. And these are platforms which will give you free content or relative, or most of it free or 80% of it is free. Um, but then if you really want to get the most out of it, you need to pay like 10 bucks a month. Okay. So not overly expensive. All right. You know, just thinking back to my own misspent youth, uh, when I was at uni, uh, uni was something that we did because we believed it would kind of get us started in our career. And then the longer we spent in our career, 
the, the more times we moved from, say, one employer to the other, there was a general belief that, okay, the importance of your career begins to diminish and more weight is put on the relevance of your professional experience. Mm -hmm. As uh, a manager in the industry, what is your perspective on that? Like, how do you see it? Like, if someone comes to you mm -hmm. and they've done a degree five years ago, how, how, how impressed are you by that when you look at their profile? Honestly, I rarely see if people have gone to uni when I'm reviewing CVs. The two things that I quickly look for is their experience first and then their certification. Because for me as a hiring manager, the most important thing for me is can they do the job? Now, if somebody has got a Bachelor of uh, Computer Science and I don't know, uh, sorry, a Bachelor of Cybersecurity and I don't know what they did in that degree, a lot of all I know, a lot of it could just be fluff. So, yeah marketing and ethics and a little bit of cyber and things like that. Now, I'm not saying all degrees, all cybersecurity degrees are, are like that, but I have seen a lot, which from pretty reputable unions as well, that just really aren't giving those hard technical skills to let students. Yeah, I, I, I would have to agree with that. I mean, look, my, my, my um, evidence is, is anecdotal. I can really only go on what I see, how, the behaviors I see in my, in my client base and if I look at a PD, for example, typically it will say um, bachelor's degree or equivalent or tertiary degree or equivalent. So it seems to be kind of not that important. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say relevant certifications such as, and they'll list all of these certifications. Yeah. Yep. So from a client's perspective, it seems that they place far more importance mm -hmm. on certifications than a uni degree, unless yeah. it's something like um, data science, mm -hmm. where a PhD is va valued very highly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel that certifications as well, they are a, um, a an endorsement by a sort of registered industry recognized mm -hmm. third party that say, as you said earlier, this person actually knows we've certified this person at this level. Mm. We're confident that they have the requisite knowledge and experience mm -hmm. to deliver at this level. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, and to give a real practical example of that is that you could have, you could be applying for a job at a company and as a SOC analyst, they use Splunk for their team. If you have a couple of Splunk certifications, which cost you two, $300, uh, after doing their free training, then that hiring manager would be very confident from the get-go that you can do the job. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and again, I think the uh, the other great thing about certifications is that typically people are doing them throughout their career regularly. Mm -hmm. And the other interesting thing I think is that universe. I mean, sorry, companies very rarely have a relationship with tertiary institutions. I mean, maybe they do, maybe they go and do like career shows and things yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. but there's not really a sort of direct connection between the project or the program that you're working on and the University of New South Wales, for example. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're working on a, a project to lead, uh, to lead an organization to ISO 27K certification, yeah, yep. they really are going to care whether or not you're ISO 27K mm -hmm. certified. Mm -hmm. So yeah, interesting. Yep. And I guess the other thing, the other interesting thing is degrees don't expire, certifications do. They do, yeah. A lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, sorry, Jason, I um, stemmed your flow there. Please proceed. No, that's that's basically what I wanted to cover in terms of syllabus. But uh, <coughs> like uh, we've got a, we're, in terms of syllabus, that's only just really one facet when weighing up these, this decision of should I go to uni or should I do certifications, right? There's things like cost time uh what else um well i think i think that um if i think about it holistically university probably gives you a lot of soft skills mm -hmm. so like if when i was looking at the syllabus here about all of these topics they're all very it it's quite binary it's factual it's scientific yeah, yeah. it's either correct or it's not correct um whereas we all know that to be good at cyber you not just have to be, you don't just have to be Technically proficient, you have to be very good at uh, emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. stakeholder engagement and influencing, <clears throat> reading the room, understanding your audience and moderating your communication accordingly. Mm -hmm. So perhaps university, because it relies on interacting with fellow students, working as a team, yep. handing in 
assignments on time, group uh, projects, group projects, the worst, but and uh, extracurricular activities, perhaps they make you a more well-rounded cyber person yeah, and maybe yeah. the social skills to, to be successful, especially at the communication side, which is so important in cyber, right? Mm -hmm. If you're the most technically proficient person in the room, but in a meeting with the stakeholders, you just piss them off or can't get your message across. Your technical proficiency means nothing. Yeah, <coughs> it happens a lot. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so um, look, I think uh, we could start going through a lot of the pros and cons sure. of, uh, of that. So the, the biggest one I think to start with would probably be cost, right? Because degrees, they're known to be expensive. You could go anywhere between 30 to 60K if you were doing a master's, for example. Um, with doing certifications, you're looking at Aussie dollars probably about two to three K per certification if you're doing one that isn't uh, vendor endorsed. Um, so for example, the OSCP I think is now about two, two and a half. Um, whereas, yeah, a, a degree you're looking at $1,000, roughly $1,200 per subject for 20, how many, 8, 16, 24 subjects. So you're looking at about, you know, 36 K, right? Which so, is deferred. Which is deferred. So you don't have to come up with that cash up front. Um, this, th this actually might be one of the biggest hurdles into following this path is do you have the upfront money? Because, uh, while in the table that I put forward, you're not doing, you know, four or $5,000 certifications at a time, you might just be doing one or two, but you might need, you know, a few, a few grand just to get started. Just out of curiosity, Jason, when you do a certification, do they expect to be paid the whole thing up front or yes. can you, there's no payment plan? Generally it's all up front. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, and generally that's what mum and dad's are for. Yeah, exactly. Generally you have to pay for the, the exam. Now that's covered in the course generally. And then if you fail the exam the first time, you just have to pay to reset the exam, which is about anywhere between one to three hundred dollars which is fine when you compare that to if you fail a subject at uni and you have to take the entire subject again you look at about one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars right jesus yeah and you know failure is quite a normal part of learning i i've i'm, I'm on record to failing my oscp twice um and sorry pa passing it on my second attempt not failing twice um and yeah, I just forked out a couple hundred dollars for, for the extra exam set. I didn't have to spend two, three K on pay for the whole course again, right? That's awesome. Yeah. Um, All right. So we're saying that probably when it comes to the cost side of things, certifications are uh, nudging in front slightly? I'd probably say nudging in front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So, I mean, look, uh, we talked about cost. Cost is all about money, mm -hmm. but of course, time is money. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the, the time factors. Yeah, yeah. So, look, I remember uni being extremely stressful. Like, time management is key to, to get through uni because, generally speaking, most, most kids are going to have to work while they're at uni. Uh, not, all, not, not everybody has rich mum and dads that can uh, pay for pay for their living expenses while, once they finish high school, right? Um, but shout out to those who do. Um, no, no hate there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so so effectively, it's, it's real time management. And that's, that's good in a way because it really builds up that skill. Yeah. But on the downside, I remember being stressed. I remember being at work, um, thinking that I'm just not going to be able to finish my assignment in time, there are just not enough hours in the day. Now I managed to finish it and get a reasonable grade. That's why I got invented red. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but what, when it comes to time, you're really operating on the university schedule. You're not operating on your own. So for me, I was always trying to juggle shifts around, uh, when I had subjects at uni, um, and the transport in between both work and uni and home and just trying to mess every get everything together so from a time's perspective it's very tough because you're not learning isn't your first priority anymore it's your time management and then learning um whereas i feel like if you were doing a degree 
there is a challenge there that you are going to have to be really, really self motivated. You're going to have to force yourself to effectively work on this, work on your your subject subjects or your certifications as if it was a degree. Um, build yourself a timetable, but you can still that gives you a lot more flexibility though to work. So you can still fit that in around work. You're not having to bend over for backwards uh, and trying to pick up. So really, really late shifts because that's the only, only time somebody's willing to give a shift away. You can put work as your first priority in terms of your schedule and then um, and then focus all your other time on it. Especially if your work is cyber related, I'm sure your employer is going to be a lot more flexible. If exactly. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. going to be getting a certification that's going to create value for them. Yep. Yep. Exactly. <clears throat> all right. Very good. Fantastic. So then we talked about, um, well, we talked about the ability to work. That means, you know, actually earning money while you're either studying a degree or mm. you're ready for certification. Okay. All right. And then um, in terms of syllabus, you mentioned this actually. We talked about electives or fluff subjects. And yeah, yeah. There's a lot of fluff subjects in degrees. Um, now, you know, if you ask me, I actually really enjoyed ethics. Um, I hated ethics because I thought it was interesting. But has it helped me on my in in my career? Absolutely not. Has right. it helped me learn things in computer science? Absolutely not. It was it was a fluff subject. But you are very ethical, Jason. Surely it has worked. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> you don't need to do ethics to become an ethical hacker. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you have to do you have to do fluff, fluff subjects. You're always having to juggle four subjects at once if you're planning on completing it within the full time time span of three years or less. If you're you need your trimesters. Uh, and so certifications are absolutely 100% fluff free by the sounds of it. I would say 90% fluff free. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this, yeah, uh, we, we touched on it before, but if you fail a subject at uni, then you're going to have to sit that whole subject again. That delays your graduation by six months. That delays your ability, largely speaking, to get a graduate job. Um, that's going to look bad on your transcript as well, because you would have a big F there, which will pull down your uh, average mark. So from, from that perspective, the having certificates really just do, going down this path of doing certifications instead, just really just empowers you to learn at your own pace, have that freedom, be able to schedule things. If you fail, that's okay. I'll study for another two weeks and I'll pick back. So less risk, less pressure, less stress. I'd say so. Less cost. Wow. They, yeah. It's sounding pretty good. The certifications, but Less, not no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Very good. Uh, are there any other risks, or, or does that pretty much sum up the risks? I think to both. When it comes to risk, when you're looking at either <coughs> uni or certif certifications, is that the this is really un uncharted territory. There's not a. I will say, cybersecurity and broadly speaking, technology has a bit of an obsession with certificates and it. I'm, I'm sure this podcast would actually make me seem like I'm on that bandwagon. Um, but in isolation, when we're just comparing certification or uni, um, it's really, it's really, you know, university is definitely the safer option because a lot of job applications, they want people who have done this degree, right? Um, now we are seeing that change over time. Um, but the, yeah, largely speaking, people still want that bachelor's degree. They want that comp sci degree or that bachelor's cybersecurity degree or something <laughs> like that. There's not a lot of organizations yet who would entertain getting somebody who has been self-teaching and doing all these industry certifications for a grad program, even though that person probably would be more technically superior than the person who went to uni. So I think it's uncharted territory and that, therefore that brings a lot of risk. Even though a lot of the things that we've talked about really lean in the student's favor to do certifications in uni, it's still that HR field. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm, I'm big keen to hear from you. You mentioned that you're seeing a lot of or equivalents now on, on JDs and, and, and hiring requirements. Is that starting to change? Look, I think, I think that's a very good question. I think that's something that you always have to remember as a candidate when you're applying for a role is that before your CV arrives on the hiring manager's desk, 
it will end up with the internal talent acquisition team, the internal recruitment team, even if you're going direct. You know, if you if you go if you're applying for a role through an agency, they will typically submit it to a, a TA or an HR person who will then distribute the CVs to the hiring manager. Now, the reality is that most uh, talent acquisition teams are very, very busy. Mm. They're time for. Uh, they typically have to cover lots of different roles. So they uh, would be probably be more uh, generalist than um, vertical specialists. So they wouldn't have good <clears throat> chance the nuance of each individual field, right? Not to, not, of course, it's generalization yeah. and total respect to all of my uh, talent acquisition and HR friends out there. Um, but they are time for, and let's use an example. Let's say you have three CVs that are comparable in terms of levels of experience. Mm -hmm. You know, they've all worked relatively good companies for decent 10 years. And the only difference between them is that one CV has both a bachelor's degree and relevant certifications. Mm -hmm. One CV has um, certifications uh, but no degree. And then the third one has a degree, but no certifications. <laughs> I hope I haven't confused mm -hmm. people. The, the, the one with the degree and the certifications will trump the other two, but the one with the certifications would trump the one that has a bachelor's degree, but no certifications. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So that would be the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in terms of the perception of organizations right now, uh, the, importance of certifications is more heavily weighted mm -hmm. than anything else Pure, okay. purely because it's 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 not academic it's it's new it's up to date these are the 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 let's say for example aws you're hiring an aws cloud security engineer mm -hmm. you're much more likely to interview the one that's got aws cloud security certifications mm -hmm. than often without mm -hmm. uh, it could be that the guy without is actually way better you know um the service, I, I, it's funny, it's funny that we should have this conversation. I have certain clients, they are in the minority, but I have certain clients who will say to me, do not send me a CV with certifications. The certification only tells me that this person is good at learning and storing information and passing exams. Mm -hmm. It doesn't speak to how adept they are at actually designing, building and implementing a successful solution. So then how would the hiring manager validate their capability <clears throat> i guess um this would be a hiring manager who's been in the industry themselves has worked for lots of organizations themselves mm -hmm. and when they see a person's cv they will know the specific project that the person has been working on okay. because their network is very large mm -hmm. it's a small, small industry mm -hmm. right and a lot of uh, a lot of um very experienced cyber people are very well networked they mm -hmm. go to the same events they know what's going on uh, in their competitors' organizations, they know about the uh, the evolution of the threat landscape, emerging tech, mm -hmm. where relevant implementations are happening and they can normally make a judgment call. But of course, you have to bring the person in and put them through their paces. Yeah, yeah. So have you represented anybody who has a few degrees, but no, sorry, has a few certifications and no degrees? Yes, yes. I, I have seen people opt for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for the reasons that you've out outlined, they've probably done a fairly similar analysis. Yeah. And um, they've also seen, I think, a lot of PDs. You know, when you go online and you look at PDs, you can tell from the way in which they're written that the client does seem to value certifications more highly than degrees. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of like that sort of scenario. Yeah, right. And, and also, like, as you said, if you, if you are in an organization where learning and development is offered, mm -hmm it's more often than not that they're offering certifications rather than, hey, would you like to go back to uni? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cheaper, more targeted in terms of the syllabus and what they want their employee to learn, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, of course, I think just going back to that whole mindset perspective, it says very clearly, particularly if you've got loads of certifications like you and they're all up to date, they're not expired. Mm. It says very clearly to the client, I have, I'm a, I've got skin in the game, I'm mm -hmm. invested, I'm spending my hard-earned money and investing my valuable time that I could be spending with my family, my kids, et cetera, mm. getting these certifications yep. for you, Mr. Client, or Mrs. Client. So 
Um, yes, I think that from a client, at least again, this is anecdotal evidence, yeah, but yeah. what I've seen is certifications seem to be more appreciated. Mm. Unless it's like a postgraduate thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. Right, so risk aside, you went to uni. I did. <laughs> what did you think about the social experience there? I, uh, yes, look, we touched on this earlier. I think that, and, and you know, you, you, you refer to fluff. I think that the value of fluff mm. is, is perhaps underrated. Okay. I think that, you know, what's life without a bit of fluff? I think fluff often refers to maybe the sort of softer side of humanity, mm. um, the more people side, perhaps mm. the slightly harder to define side, but it's so important in the workplace, you know, your ability to to deliver depends on the quality of the relationships you have with the people around you. And I think university is a great opportunity for for, for people from school, you know, which is quite cliquey, it's quite a small group. All yeah. of a sudden you're stepping into a much bigger world, building new relationships, um, as you said, learning time management, managing mm -hmm. uh, your workload with part-time work. It builds- And parties. Resilience, parties, <laughs> you know, yeah. University is a lot of fun. You know, we've got to have fun in our lives. It can't just all be work, 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 certifications, work. It's got, mm -hmm. you've got to have some fun. There's got to be balance. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's hard to quantify that, but I think that's very important as well. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you this, Jason. Yeah. If you, if you were, when did you finish school? You were 17, 18? 17. All right. Yeah. So if you were that Jason all over again and you knew then what you knew now, mm. what would you do from a preparing yourself for a career in cybersecurity perspective? I, it's, it's hard because it's um, with the benefit of hindsight and my particular risk tolerance, but I definitely would do the certification route. Okay. Yeah, <coughs> no, no doubt. Um, because Shit. like, I, I, I'll, I'll never forget uni and the social aspect and it just felt that, uh, there was low responsibilities in, in terms of life. Um, you just had to get your assignment, assignments in and, uh, earn enough money to eat and to put petrol in your car. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it, it was world building. Yeah. You see, you're open up to a different way of thinking. You're seeing people with vastly different beliefs, ideologies, the economic mindsets, and, you know, all of these different things at uni, and you're exposed to all that. And it's really world, world building in, you know, in terms of yourself and where your values lie, and you learn about new things and how you take on that, all that new information. If you have that sort of growth mindset and you're like, okay, well, for example, I've never heard of socialism before. It sounds like a good idea, but maybe it isn't. Um, not taking over a side of the argument here, just as an example. So, yeah, I thought it was really, really world building um, and a real defining chapter of your life. And I feel like if you were to do certifications, you'd just miss out on that entirely. You would really need to have a strong social network. You'd need to uh, have good friends. You'd still, you know, hang out with them, enjoy that time of your life. But also, I think you would also need to focus on emerging yourself within communities of what you're studying. So, for example, when I was doing my OSCP, there was a Discord channel called InfoSec Prep. Still there, but it's had a bit, bit of a change of focus when I was on it. But it was I, I, I'm still connected with people who were doing OSCP when I did it many, many years ago. Uh, and we still keep in touch. Like, I have a friend in Israel and a friend in Spain, and we all keep in touch. Uh, we still keep in, keep track of each other's careers and how we've been progressing. But yeah, so uh, it, it is definitely fun having that sort of online social aspect. But I mean, if I had to choose between the two, I would definitely choose the, the uni aspects for that one. So the idea in an ideal world, you do both. You do what you did, the best of both worlds, uni followed by ongoing certification. I think... Oh, it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah, because you would miss out on so much, you know, social life. Yeah, if you if you didn't go to uni, um, but I think it's it's possibly a good opportunity to mention that not everybody has the opportunity to go to uni. Like the entry requirements to get into degrees generally are in the eighty five, ninety plus, um, and even good students 
can't get into like a comp sci degree in Sydney, in a Sydney based uni, for example. And that's one of the reasons I went down to Wollongong. Um, and there's people who got worse marks than me and just can't go to uni. So they'll go to TAFE, um, for example. But when it comes to when you do TAFE for uni, a uh, TAFE for certification, well, TAFE will take you through the certifications anyway. You may as well just do them on your own. So digressing a little bit, but um, <laughs> it's hard to choose. Yeah, it, it would really be hard to choose. It would. It, I I I wouldn't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to. I think. I think. Look, if I just think purely ruthlessly, and I think about yeah. this purely in terms of time, money, mm. and what the employment market values more highly. Yeah. If you have to choose, I would suggest going down the certification route. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the payoff is that you miss out on all of the personal development that yeah, it brings yeah. you. So, yeah. and it's hard to it's hard to put a dollar it's hard to put a price tag on that because it is yeah. invaluable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, I hope we haven't um, confused everyone. But anyway, it's uh, a lot to think about. What we're going to do is uh, Jason's done all of this research so that you don't have to. We will share that in the course notes and also some links to some of these um, certifications, yep. especially the more affordable ones. Yep, absolutely. And along with this uh, long form podcast, I'll have a shorter video on YouTube just breaking down uh, the more syllabus side and just a few of the pros and cons of what we talked about today. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, um, we're always happy to take questions. So feel free to reach out to us if you'd like to dig into any of these topics even more deeply than we have today. Mm. So Jason, thanks very much for that. You put in a lot of work. I really appreciate it. And um, we look forward to welcoming, welcoming you back on the show in the not too distant future. Looking forward to it. Thanks a lot. Thank you.